Hello and welcome to The Pop Hive, the show all about pop culture and entertainment from the discerning eye of me, your host, Kate Sevilla. This week we discuss two well-fed celebrity chefs, the return of Brandy and Monica, the new Hunger Games film, plus we speak to beer writer and author of Let Me Tell You About Beer, the fabulous Melissa Cole. Lucky for you, I don't have any award shows to talk about this week. So instead, I would like to start off this episode by making a public service announcement, mainly to the people who work at the Daily Mail and all of you internet trolls out there. Leave Jamie Oliver alone. The Daily Mail has recently implied that Jamie Oliver is fat. Here's the thing. Who the hell cares? For the amount of good that Jamie Oliver does, I think we can all afford to be a bit nicer to him. Yes, he has named his children ridiculous things, but it's none of our business, whether or not he was smoking pot at the time he named them. Okay? And it's none of our business if Jamie did, in fact, eat all of the pies. They were probably delicious. On the same note, leave Nigella Lawson alone. Both The Guardian and The Daily Mail have recently taken to dissecting what Nigella Lawson eats based on the photos she posted to Twitter. The Guardian had a nutritionist make comments on each of Nigella's meals. Oh, Nigella, you could do with a bit more greens, and oh, that's a bit of sugar now, isn't it? While the Daily Mail has done the exact same thing, they've also chastised Nigella for not having those carb cravings under control. You know what I have to say to that? Shut up! She looks amazing and so does her food. In other ridiculous news, Adele went shopping at Tesco with her female bodyguard, where she was allegedly buying food and toilet paper. Fascinating. Bruno Mars has claimed he puts margarine and barbecue-flavored potato chips in his hair to give him that super sexy pompadour. Bruno is the only man I would ever gladly swap hair with, but even I know that he doesn't really put barbecue crisps in his hair to get it to stand up like that. We all know what he really puts in it. Fiona Apple has finally announced the title of her much-anticipated new album, which is called The Either Wheel is Wiser Than the Driver with a Screw and the Whipping Cords Will Serve You More Than Ropes Will Ever Do. Yep, a mere 23 words that just roll off the tongue. The Either Wheel is Wiser Than the Driver with a Screw and the Whipping Cords Will Serve You More Than Ropes Will Ever Do. We'll be out sometime in June. Christina Hendricks had her phone hacked, and while many of the photos released of her are real, the topless ones of her are apparently fakes. Unfortunately, the nude photos of a pregnant Jessica Simpson that ended up on the cover of Elle magazine is not fake. Brandy and Monica have finally debuted their next big duet, following up from their 1998 hit, The Boy Is Mine, with a song called It All Belongs To Me. The video itself is definitely watchable, with both ladies looking absolutely stunning in some serious couture. The song itself is quite catchy, with Brandy and Monica crooning lyrics like, The MacBook. That shit is mine. So log off your Facebook. The only alarming part of the video is that both ladies curiously only seem to convey emotions through their hand movements and their arm movements, not their faces. Hmm. And speaking of music that sounds good but has a few ridiculous lyrics, meet Valley. Valley is the next new thing in pop, and her video for her song Polaroid is entertaining and colorful with just the right amount of cheese. Valley name checks Perez Hilton, Lady Gaga, MTV, and TMZ in her song, which is kind of annoying but smart for marketing reasons. But my favorite part of her song is the lyric, Pose for my Polaroid picture. Ooh, like cold polar bears in winter. And halfway through the song, there are two women in stilettos wearing what are meant to be giant polar bear heads, but they're actually just panda bear heads which is not really the same. But the lyrics don't exactly make sense, so why should fake bear heads, huh? Avril Lavigne has released a new video for her song Goodbye to mark the end of a year-long tour she apparently just finished. Her video, which she insists is a short film, was shot at the Chateau Maman in LA. The film shows Avril in a hotel room, in her underwear. She then shaves her legs with champagne. She then walks around the hotel room in her underwear. She opens a door in her underwear. She cries in her underwear. She takes off a wig. She cries more in her underwear. If the video was actually a film, I suppose its title should be something along the lines of Secret Diary of a Call Girl Who Had No Clients. But enough about how depressing the world of pop music is. Let's talk movies. Twilight fans are quivering with excitement at Robert Pattinson's latest film, Bellamy. I loved you when you had nothing. It's not enough to be loved. It's so clear to me. There is no next life. And I... I'm going to live. In Belle Ami, Pattinson's character figures out that the real power in Paris lies with rich men's wives. So he lies with them. 
He lies with them, and on top of them, and then to them, and they get very upset. But they keep sleeping with him anyway. See, he doesn't want to be this way and live like this, fucking his way across Paris, but he must, and so he does. Tragic. You've probably noticed that everyone is talking about the Hunger Games. Yeah, I didn't read the books either, but I finally pulled my finger out and watched the trailer, and I was left with my mouth open, with a single bit of drool collecting in my lap. So you're here to make me look pretty? I'm here to help you make an impression. And so it was decreed that each year, the 12 districts of Pan Am shall offer up in tribute one young man and woman between the ages of 12 and 18 to be trained in the art of survival and to be prepared to fight to the death. The Hunger Games is the first book in the Hunger Games trilogy by Suzanne Collins. Like Twilight, the Hunger Games books are for young adults. But unlike Twilight, we don't have any vampires or werewolves. Just a post-apocalyptic world where we watch people's lives and sanity in danger on large high-definition screens all over the world. Like any other book series with a high-budget film adaptation, fans are going nuts, and super hit band Arcade Fire has recorded a song for the soundtrack, as has Taylor Swift. It's hard not to get swept up in the excitement of the film's release on March 23rd, but be sure to check out CapitalCouture.pn for a style breakdown of the Capitol's most fashionable escort, Effie Trinket, played by Elizabeth Banks. Our special guest this week is beer writer and author Melissa Cole, who talks to us about her book, Let Me Tell You About Beer. And then we drink some beer. Passionate, knowledgeable, and an excellent drinking buddy, nobody knows about or talks about beer the way Melissa Cole does. And I'm thrilled to be talking to her today at the Windmill Pub in Mayfair. Um, do you remember the first beer that you ever tried? Uh, funny enough, actually, yeah. I mean, it, it was actually something that really brought home to me the sensory, sensory value of smell of uh, my grandfather giving me an illicit sip of his beer in the garden of a place called the Barley Mow in Enkfield Green. It was the old spice shaving foam that he used to use that had that sandalwoody smell, that yeah. real sense of very traditional British beer. I can't remember the exact flavour because, you know, you're a kid and yeah. it's bitter and you're trained as a kid not to like bitter, mm. you're trained to like sweet and all those sorts of things. But and yeah. that, that sort of, I just, it was such a great memory. So unfortunately I lost it when I was 12 and, and you know, it, it really sort of brought back a very powerful memory. So that was my earliest beer memory. Oh, that's lovely. I think, I think mine was when I was two. And my, uh, my godfather gave me a sip of beer, probably like Budweiser or something out of a can. So you win the, uh, the first beer story. <laughs> yeah, probably. So you're a journalist by yes. trade. Yes. So how, how did you go from being a journalist to being this magnificent, genius beer lady? Well, I mean, I, you know, it's, it's not surprising that I got into beer drinking when I was a student at university studying journalism. Um, and I actually worked in this fantastic pub called The Old Black Bull in Preston. And uh, I walked away from that with two great loves of my life, one of which was uh, great beer and the other one of which was the landlord's son, to whom I'm now married. You did well. <laughs> yeah, yeah can't, can't, can't be bad. Every time I have to go to the in-laws, I have to go to the pub. So, so yeah, so, and actually when I left university, I, I started working for the pub trade paper. But, there's all, but also, I'm really passionate about the product. I drink beer, I enjoy beer, I love beer, I get excited about beer, I brew beer, I write about beer. You know, it's, it is what I want to do. Yeah. So how did how did you were there courses that you went on? Um, I did a, I did a couple of courses, but I, I without wishing to denigrate the the, the the fact that they're very good bases and they have given me some excellent knowledge. I'm very lucky. I've been blessed with a very good palate, um, and that's led me to judge all over the world. And it's also led me to you know it, it, it for me it was it was about taking what I knew I could taste and being able to translate it immediately into something that was understandable because I, I love food as well I cook an awful lot I've we lived in an area that was heavily Asian and, and, and a lot of immigrants and all that sort of stuff and, and we always were exposed to lots of really exciting and different flavors so from a young age yeah you know that sort of that sort of exposure to exciting things for your palate really right. wasn't a problem and it was it was quite commonplace so so you know, it, yeah. it, I, I, whilst I don't dismiss, uh, I don't, I don't want to make beer anything other than the awesomely sociable drink it is. First and foremost, beer is a social lubricant. That's what I say every time. It's, yeah. a, it's in the intro to a book. It's in, it's in everything that I do. So you wrote a fantastic book called "Let Me Tell You About Beer." 
um, which is extremely extensive because not only do you talk about like the history of brewing and the brewing process, yep. and if you like a G and T, this is the beer that you might want to try. How long did it take you to write that book? Um, it took me six months okay. to write that. It was everything that I've built up, everything that I've learned, everything that I've tried to put over to people over the years. I really wanted to have a natural flow and a progression. And that's why, as you say, there's a table right at the front. If you don't normally drink beer, then I've, then hopefully, if you drink this normally, then if you turn to page whatever this is, then you'll find this style of beer and take your pick from the tasting notes there and give it a whirl. There really is something that will fit everybody at some point or another. You've just Sometimes you've got to search a bit harder, sometimes you can hit it first time. It, it, you know, it, it, is, it is what it is. So, I would like to do a tasting with you. <laughs> Surprise! 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 Beer! So if we can have some, some beer. Yes! Move that. So, if you were to order one of these, what is what is the proper way to taste beer? Well, th normally what you do when you're tasting beer is actually sort of, you try you try not to fill the glass up. But what you normally do is you look up, look up at the lights. Um, okay. Try and assess. So you don't really don't want any passengers or friends or anything floating in it. Um, so then you put your hand over the top, okay. give it a, a nice sniff. So you'll start getting a little tiny bit of almost granary bread and a slight citrusy, almost uh, almost sort of like a baked orange peel off of this. Okay. And then on the palate, again you get that slight sweet bready note, mm. but and the and the, and the finish is. A very slightly like uh, you know when you when you pull a grass stalk out of its little sheath yeah. and you stick that in it, stick your, that in your mouth in the summer. It's very difficult to say a taste is green, but you, you know. No, what but I, mean. I know what you mean. Yeah. I know exactly what you mean. Yeah. Cool. So what what beers so do we have here? We have here. Right, we've got Sharp's Cornish Coaster here, which actually Sharp's is a brewery from Cornwall. I know Doom Bar is their best selling beer, but this is actually my favourite of their of their what you call sessionable, like re easy drinking. Right. Stand in the pub on a Friday night, have a couple of those, and not fall over kind of beers. Oh. Nice. So, if you'd like to take that, it's got a slightly peachy nose to it. Oh, yeah. A little bit peachy floral to it, a little tiny touch of elderflower, and it's got that on the palate as well. So That's nice. You can definitely taste the elderflower in yes. that as well. Yes, yeah. Surprising. It's that sort of, it's sort of that finish. It's almost elderflower cordial as opposed yeah. to sort of the elderflower itself. That is Young's Ordinary again. It's a little bit of a fresher sample, so hopefully you might be able to get okay. a bit more of that citrus okay. note off of it. That's nice. Mm. That's not as, this, this one is much more floral. Yes. To my to my palate. Yes, it is very. It is floral. A little tiny bit more about what you'd expect from a traditional mm. British beer. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's a lot. Actually, I think that's a bit more smooth. Yeah, this has got one. a bit more about it. And then talking of things that have got something about it, this is um, the Young's Porter. Okay. Um, now Porter was the London style of beer. Um, so named because it was drunk by the street and river porters. Uh, street porters, what we now know as uh, cabbies. In fact, there's the your porter? progression of your, of oh, your well street that's, porters. That's lovely. That's it's quite lovely convenient. There. I just suppose that's out the corner of my eye. Promise that wasn't planned. <laughs> that will have some sort of chocolate, coffee, espresso notes to it. A little tiny bit yeah. of almost sour fruit, almost sour cherry on that as well. It's good, isn't it? That's really good. It smells very smoky. Yes. And then it, but it tastes almost sweet. Like when you were talking about the coffee, you know how yeah. coffee can almost taste sweet sometimes, yeah, like a sweet roasty. Mo yeah. 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 See, but so many people are scared of dark beers. Yeah, they are. There's this myth that they're more calorific than other beers. They're not. Uh, there's also sort of the whole thing about, you know, you should drink Guinness when you're pregnant or breastfeeding <laughs> or stout. Like you really, well, if a doctor tells you that, that you should be drinking stout because you're anemic, you probably want to change doctors. I think the major barrier to most women when they're when they're when they're trying when they're trying beers is that folks do hand them things like this. I didn't start drinking this kind of beer in any way, shape, form. Not traditional beer. I found sort of the new generation of blonder beers of more fruity, more exciting, more floral, more um, or more, fr you know, just just had more about them. Yeah. Um, and that's what people do is they kind of go, oh well, because you're starting beer for the first time, we should try on something simple. So you take somebody from drinking a high alcohol complex product to asking them to completely dumb down their taste buds. Mm, yeah, yeah, not so much. So can we dispel this myth once and for all? Do women need their own special beer, Melissa Cole? Do you sit down with your husband and have a different dinner because of your special girly taste buds? Do you shop on the basis that, you know, you have special girly taste buds and he has man taste buds? All sarcasm aside, 
I find the concept of a female beer just ridiculous. Big breweries have already tried this, and Molson's, Molson Coors are the latest one to give it a mm. pop with anime. Yeah. Carlsberg have already tried it with Eve. Heineken have tried it with various different things all around Europe. This stuff is micro-filtered, it's flavoured, it's not, it's not, it's just not beer. One of them tastes like a flipping honey lemon locket, for God's sake. It, anyway, rant over. You ready for the lightning round, Melissa Cole? Pray yourself. Go. Okay, favourite film? Ah, Blazing Saddles. Favourite song to sing in the shower? Not much of a shower singer, but I absolutely love um, singing along to James Laid in the car. Favourite kind of sandwich? Anything with melted cheese. Nice. Favourite curse word? Bollocks. Nice. It's so expressive. Mm. First celebrity crush? John Taylor Duran Duran. Favourite book? Oh, you've really got me on that one. Say yours. Yeah, okay, mine. Um, I, think, I think probably the, the, the book that I would say that I think everybody should read in their life is Lord of the Flies. Fair enough, fair enough. Most embarrassing song that you have on your iTunes playlist? The Mamas and Papas Chirp Chirp Cheap Cheap. It's because my sister always used to play it and she's quite a bit older than I am. And it's... <laughs> favourite beer? Anything that's in my hand at the time. Least favourite beer? Light struck beer. It smells like skunks. Which celebrity would play you in a movie about your life? Ollie Reed in drag. <laughs> <laughs> Favourite desserts? Cheese. Award you would most like to win? Beer writer of the year. Favourite app on your phone? Twitter. What is your handle on Twitter? Melissa, at Melissa Cole. And do you have a website, Melissa Cole? I do. Uh, it's, I'm just about to launch Let Me Tell You About Beer.co.uk. Thank you very much for being on the show, Melissa. No problems at all. Always a pleasure. Well, you know, we always, we always enjoy our time drinking beer together, madam. We do. It's true. <laughs> very true. That's all we have time for this week, but please do give us a like on Facebook or follow us on Twitter as at Popive. Thank you very much for watching.